welcome back to tales of chemistry in this episode we are discussing the isomerism in complexes precisely the structural isomerism now what is this structural isomerism this type of isomerism that is structural isomerism arises due to the difference in the structure due to the difference in structure of coordination compound same molecular formula but different structure that is what we call isomerism or precisely structural isomerism same molecular formula but different structure the four type of structural isomerism that we need to discuss are number 1 ionization isomerism this is the most important one so we will discuss this at the end ionization isomerism second one is hydrate isomerism hydrate isomerism third one is coordination isomerism coordination isomerism and the last one the fourth one that we need to study is linkage isomerism so these are the four types of structural isomerism that we must study so let us start with the second one which is hydrate isomerism now hydrate isomerism is also called solvate isomerism now generally what we have seen in the papers during correction is students write hydration isomerism or solvation isomerism for it which is wrong you can only write hydrate isomerism now what is this hydrate isomerism okay so this hydrate or solvate isomerism or isomers solvate isomers are isomers of a complex solvate isomers are isomers of a complex that differ that differ in the presence or placement of water molecules so hydrate word indicates water isn't it water molecules in the complex so let me repeat this hydrate isomers are isomers of a complex that differ in the placement of water molecules in the complex example cr h2o6 cl3 now this is a violet color complex not compulsory to memorize the color it's not needed it's hydrate isomerism as look at this explanation difference in the a uh, placement of water molecule so if you shift one water molecule from within the complex to outside meaning h2o6 times will now become h2o5 times cr h2o5 times then you are removing one ligand right so to replace for that you need to take one cl from the counter ion position bring it inside as a ligand so here you will have cl2 and water of crystallization okay now this will have a pale green color again i am repeating not required to memorize the color now 
what has happened in these two examples in the first case the ligands were only aqua it was a homoleptic complex only one kind of ligand but the light green one is a heteroleptic uh, compound why one of the cl there are three cl as counter ion i brought one in and shifted one water outside okay so these two are examples for hydrate isomers one more example that i can write now is send one more h2o outside which means cr h2o four times it will become bring a cl also again one more cl bring it inside right so one cl remains there and this is a dihydrate this one will have a dark green color okay so i hope the examples are clear the meaning of hydrate isomerism is clear also the point to be noted is it's hydrate not hydration now the third isomerism that we need to discuss coordination isomerism one of the easiest uh, you know types of isomerism to understand coordination isomerism so one of the criteria the only thing that you need to look at here is both the uh complexes are both sides positive and negative part of the compound are complex in nature both the, the positive and negative ions both positive and negative ions are complex in nature okay and then what you do is mere interchange of ligands between the cation and anion then the ligands are interchanged the ligands are interchanged between between the cation and the anion so let me take an example look at this example suppose you have co nh3 six times okay and the negative complex is cr cn6 so this particular compounds coordination isomerism will be you know interchange the ligands or interchange the metal in other words so you will have cr nh3 6 and co cn6 these are examples for coordination isomers now one more example that uh, you need to know here is pt nh3 four times cl2 and uh, the negative part is pt cl4 okay so here there is no point in exchanging the metal right metal remain the same platinum in both cases so what we do here is pt and bring that 4 cl to the left side so it becomes pt cl 6 already there are two chlorides or two cl ligands you are bringing in four more pt cl 6 and the other side it is pt nh3 four times so first point under coordination isomerism that you need to check is the presence of both cation and anion as complex both need to be complex and then either you exchange the ligands or you exchange the central metal this is how the isomers are formed the fourth one is linkage isomerism 
linkage isomerism which also is called structural salt isomerism linkage isomerism or structural salt isomerism okay now this is due to the presence of ambidentate ligand okay so this type of isomerism this type of isomerism arises due to the presence of ambidentate ligands. So we know what are ambidentate ligands. Ligands which can donate a pair of electron through you know various or different donor sites. Two possibilities are there to donate a pair of electron. With example it will be clear. So look at this. CO NH3 5 times NO2 and Cl2. Okay. In this, NO2 is a ambidentate ligand, meaning 1 through nitrogen, or you can donate through oxygen also. So if I write the structure or the formula CONH35 ONO and Cl2. These two are now examples for ambidentate, sorry, examples for linkage isomerism or structural salt isomerism. Now, the one question that will be bothering you now is in the examination, how are they going to ask these questions? Well, most of the time, the pair of isomers will be given to you and you are asked to identify what isomerism it is. Say now, if I'm giving you these two examples or else if I'm giving you CONH35 CN. Cl2 and Co NH3 5 times Nc Cl2. How are these two compounds related? Your answer is they are linkage isomers. So looking at the example, you need to figure out which kind of isomerism it is. But I will strongly encourage to study at least one example under each category. You learn one example at least under each category and go. So by chance, if the question is what are, say, hydrate isomers explained with an example, you have your answer ready. Okay, moving on to the first type of isomerism, which I already mentioned is the most important one, is ionization isomerism. Here also, what I have observed is children misunderstand the term and they just write ionic isomerism. Ionic isomerism is wrong. This is called ionization isomerism and this is called only ionization isomerism. No other name for this. So here compounds will have the same molecular formula. Okay. Compounds will have same molecular formula, but they produce different ions in solution. They will produce different ions in solution. So uh, what exactly does this mean? Uh, this means when they produce different ions in solution, the counter ion in each case is different. 
counter ion in each uh, you know isomer is different that is the meaning here same molecular formula but the counter ions are different let's see how to write ionization isomer so if you have a compound of this type co nh35 br so4 what is the counter ion that this will produce counter ion is so4 2 minus how do i know that the counter ion is so4 2 minus okay i need to dissolve the complex salt in water so take that complex salt solution add few drops of few drops of barium chloride solution if sulfate ions are present it should give white or thick white precipitate which is insoluble in dilute hcl okay so this is the test for sulfate ions complex salt solution is to be treated with few drops of barium chloride solution and if sulfate ions are present you will get a white precipitate or thick white precipitate which is insoluble in dilute hcl now this is one compound its isomer is by shifting br from within the square bracket to outside the square bracket i mean to say we are interchanging br and so4 that is the isomer will be co nh35 so4 and br so what is the uh, test for this okay before i suggest a test for br what is its result with barium chloride test this complex salt solution this complex salt solution when treated with when treated with few drops of barium chloride solution no white precipitate is given no white precipitate is shown okay why there is no white precipitate because we don't have sulfate anymore that is so4 2 minus is not the counter ion here Okay, so what is the type of question that is possible? Now, CONH35BRSO4, this will be given. Okay, let us call this compound A. Okay, so compound A is this. The question is, write the ionization isomer write the ionization isomer for compound A. Then suggest a test. Suggest a test suggest a test to distinguish between the two isomers okay how do you uh, you know differentiate between the two isomers so when you write your answer uh, uh, answer that is the ionization ionization isomer is co nh3 5 times so4 br okay test so first of all you can write let's make it easy to understand test is called barium chloride test okay then compound a compound a 
uh, when treated with barium chloride solution. So that completion of sentence you need to do. Compound A when treated with barium chloride solution gives us a white PPT which is insoluble in dilute HCl. But compound B, okay, no such precipitation, no such white precipitate is formed. No such white precipitate is formed here. Okay, now. In this example, I was just telling you that we needed to learn a test for Br minus ions also. Okay, so let me tell you that test for Br minus ions. It is silver nitrate solution test. This word solution is important. Yeah, it's not silver nitrate test. It is silver nitrate solution test. Now, Br minus ions combine with combine with AgNO3 silver nitrate solution to give pale yellow. Okay, instead of pale yellow, the most appropriate word will be off white, very pale yellow. Okay, or uh, off-white precipitate is seen or is given. Fine. Now, if you add silver nitrate solution to a sulfate ion, then there will be no such off-white precipitate that is formed. Sulfate will not give off-white precipitate. So, what I mean to say is to my previous question, you can, uh, you know, instead of writing barium chloride test, you can even write silver nitrate solution test. Here also barium chloride solution is compulsory. Okay. So, barium chloride solution test. Now, Instead of that, I said silver nitrate solution test can be written. So, uh, compound A will give no off-white precipitate, but compound B will give you off-white precipitate. Okay. So, these are the, uh, you know, set of questions that we ask under ionization isomerism. Then moving on, PT, one more example, PT. NH3 4 Cl2 Br2. Okay. And its ionization isomer is bring both the Br2 inside and shift the chloride outside. So Pt NH3 4 times Pt NH3 4 times Br2 and Cl2, Pt, NH3, 4, Br2 and Cl2. Now, what is a test for these two? Only one test which must give you different result with the, the two solutions. So, once again, silver nitrate solution test. Okay, then let me call the first one as compound A and its isomer compound uh, B. Okay, so now compound A will give, it, uh, it has Br2 as the counter ion, right? So it will give pay or very pale yellow precipitate or otherwise cream color of white precipitate and compound B will give will give curdy white precipitate curdy white precipitate when treated with treated with AgNO3 solution. So, these are the uh, type of questions or this is how you need to prepare yourself for the board examination with respect to structural isomerism. 
And that's all in this episode. Stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.